Hey guys, sorry for my infrequent uploading of videos. I, I always like get into uploading videos again and then I get out of it and I don't upload for like another month. Then I get into it again, upload like three videos in a week. Then I get out of it again and never upload for like another two months. But anyway, another point. This video is going to be a video on the math behind vector3.unit and vector3.magnitude. So dot magnitude uses a mathematical concept known as Pythagorean theorem. So we have a vector 3 and we do print v1 dot magnitude, right? We get 5. The magnitude is the distance from the point 0, 0, 0 of the vector 3. So this vector 3, it moves 0 studs on the x-axis, 0 studs on the z-axis, and 5 studs on the y-axis for a total of 5 studs away from this point. So when we print the dot magnitude, we get the number 5. But now let's say we add another 5 studs on the z-axis as well. So now we're moving on two different axes. So let's see, would that, so what exactly would that print? Well, you might not have expected this, but it prints some random number, crazily enough. So basically, the reason for that is because when you move 5 studs on one axis and then 5 studs on another axis, the point from the origin point is not 5 plus 5. That's the total amount you moved. But in reality, you're moving from this point to this point, going that way. So what is that distance? Well, that distance is going to be different than 5 plus 5. Basically, dot magnitude allows you to find that distance. So what is dot magnitude? Well, if we're looking at two dimensions, there's actually this thing called a vector 2. It's not used for a whole lot, but it's basically a vector 3, but without a z-axis. It's just x and y. As we can see, this has a dot magnitude as well. And so let's look, let's look at two dimensions first. So we have, if we have a vector 2 with x of 3 and y of 4, then when we print the vector 2 dot magnitude, we get 5. It gives us 5. So the distance, so if we're looking at two dimensions, if we go 3 to the right and 2 up, or we, know, we go 3 to the right and 4 up, right? Yeah, 3 to the right and 4 up, and then this distance right here is exactly 5. What is the math behind that? How does that actually work? Well, actually, it uses a thing called Pythagorean Theorem, because if we're looking at this, if this is our little graph right here, this makeshift graph. <laughs> so if we go 3 studs and then 4 studs, well, look at this. This is actually a right triangle. And so if we're looking at this like a, tr a right triangle, then we can use what's known as py the Pythagorean Theorem in order to find the length of this hypotenuse. Because we know the x and we know the y, but we just need to find this, this side, this hypotenuse. And well, Pythagorean Theorem states that a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. And well, this just means to the power of 2, if, you, if you're not familiar with that terminology. But well, so what's A, what's B, and what's C? Well, A and B are the X and the Y. It doesn't really, the, the order doesn't matter. This can be A, this can be, can be B, or this can be A, and this can be B. But C is always the hypotenuse. C is always going to be the distance that we want to, that, the actual distance that we want to find. If we do, so if A is 3, if A, so A equals 3, B is 4, and then what is C? So well, if we have A squared plus B squared equals C squared, so then... So let's plug these. In. Let's plug what it. Let's plug the numbers that we know. Let's plug those in. So we know a is three. So three to the power of two, plus four to the power of two is equal to c to the power of two. So if we simplify this, nine plus sixteen is equal to c to the power of two. Okay. So nine plus sixteen is equal to twenty-five. So c to the power of two is twenty-five. So if we have c squared equals 25, how can we find c? Well, we can find c by taking the square root of both sides. So the square root of 25 is 5 because 5 times 5 equals 5. And so that means that c is equal to 5. And so now we know that c is in fact 5. And that's exactly what this printed. So the vector 1 dot magnitude is quite literally the c. So we can literally, so we can replace this, or let's just add this on the side. Um, math dot square root of v1 dot x the power of 2 plus v1 dot y to the power of 2. So this is the same exact thing. And we'll notice both of them print 5. So this is actually the math behind v1 dot magnitude. So that what dot unit is, what dot unit is, 
is it's it's going to be another vector two in this case or a vector three it works this time with uh, vector threes but um it's going to be so now let's lab so now let's have a look so how does this work what's the math behind this well it's actually kind of funny because dot unit is the same thing as v1 divided by v v1 dot magnitude well, notice we're getting the same exact vector too. Even if we put a number in the z-axis, or a number in the y-axis, we get the same exact vectors. So, basically, what this means is we take the original vector 2, and we divide it by the distance of that vector. So it's almost like dividing 5 divided by 5, which is going to be 1, because anything divided by itself is 1. So now we have two parts here. I'm gonna, this is part 1, this is part 2. We're going to make this one red, that one's red, and we're going to make this one green. Christmas. Let's say we want to create another part that's exactly five studs. So let's say we want to take the direction from this part going to this part. What is that direction, right? So how can we find that direction and how can we go a certain amount of studs in that exact direction? Well, we can do that using dot unit. Right? Part two dot position minus part one dot position. And keep in mind we're using vector threes now, so we're gonna get three numbers. So part two dot position minus part one dot position dot unit is going to give us the direction from part 2 to part 1. Let me anchor these. It's going to print the direction from one part to the other, right? So now let's lab So now And so now it's going to be by 10 studs. It's going to be in that same direction from the origin, but now it's by 10 studs. Let's actually use a part so we can see this. So let's do it one stud from part right one stud from part one going to part two so now we want to go from this part to this part one stud in that same direction but one stud it's or it's one stud from the red part to the green part from the red part to the green part but now if we change that and we do dot unit times say 10 studs and now it's moving that direction but 10 studs and so now let's let's put like a a loop here and let's do part three dot let's just copy this I just copy this whole thing. So now this is being looped. It's it's constantly adjusting the position. And now watch this. We can move this green part. And as you as you can see, as we move the green part, it adjusts the it adjusts the direction from the red part to the green part, and it actually moves that new part in that direction. But the the actual distance from this part to this part remains the same. And then if we do part one dot position minus part two dot position instead. That's going to be from the green part to the red part. But now if we replace this with part 2 as well, now we're going to be starting at the green part and going towards the red part. And so now you can see it's closer to this side instead. And now as we move either one, we can move either one of these, and it'll move that along. Dot magnitude is, looking back at what we did earlier with vector 2s, dot magnitude is literally the distance from one point. It's literally the distance from the origin to a point. If we actually look, so I mentioned that the new part we created, this new part is going to always be the same distance from whatever it's based around, right? It's always going to be the same exact distance, just in a different direction. Because we're multiplying this, this unit vector, by 10 studs. So it's 1 times 10. So it's always going to be 10, no matter the direction. So if we were to do part, or print part 3 dot magnitude, that's always going to print 10. Well, no it's not, because it's going to be the dot magnitude is the distance from right here over to the part. So let's, instead of doing part 3 dot magnitude, let's do the distance from part 3 minus part 2. So when we do one part, mi one, one position minus another position, and we get the dot magnitude of that, that's going to be the distance from one position to the other, rather than from the origin point. And so now, now we'll see that it's always going to print 10, so I can move any of these parts around. Well, I guess apparently it goes to 9.999 sometimes, but I think that's just rounding error or something like that. I don't know. So dot magnitude is the distance from one position, or so dot magnitude is the distance, and dot unit is the direction. So to review, the distance from one position to the other is done like this: position two, dot or position two minus position one, dot magnitude, or position 1 minus p position 2 dot magnitude. It doesn't matter the direction because the distance is going to be the same either way. Dot unit, it does matter. The, the order does actually matter. And then 
position one minus position two is actually going to be different than position two minus position one. So this is going to go from from position one to position two. So now let's lap. Okay, so now we have three little variables here. We got the player, we got the character, and then we got the root part, the humanoid root part. There's this thing called a C frame, right? We have vector threes, and then we have C frames. All C frames have a property known as, or have three properties, or three. There are three properties that all C frames have: dot look vector, dot um, up vector, and dot right vector. Dot look vector, dot up vector, and dot right vector are all vector threes. But those are actually unit vectors, which is the same thing as saying like some random vector three dot unit. That's a unit vector. It's one distance or it's one stud in some dist or in some direction. And so parts like the root part have a position, and they also have a C frame, which is what we need for dot look vector dot up vector and dot right vector. And so let's just experiment with that and just let's just see what that is. So we have a local part equals instance dot new part workspace part dot anchored equals true. And so now let's create a while loop. While true do let's add a weight so it doesn't crash our game. Part dot c frame and now let's just do part dot position. Part dot position equals root dot position plus root dot c frame dot look vector times Five. The part's position is going to always be the root's position, five studs in the direction of whatever this look vector is. As I turn around, you'll notice the part is always in front of me. So that look vector is the direction in front of your character. So that's actually really useful. If you want to create some sort of like fireball effect in front of your character, you can use dot look vector and go however however many studs in that direction, right? So that's really useful. That's good to know. Now, what's dot right vector? Well, this might be self-explanatory now. Yep, it's literally just to the right. And then, now let's say you want to go to the left. Well, there's not a dot left vector, but you can do dot right vector times the negative number. And bam, now it goes to the left. And then, of course, you can do dot look vector times the negative number to go to backwards, or you can do dot up vector, which will go up, obviously. So now this one goes up five studs. Or we can do down five studs. And we might not even see this because it'll be in the ground. But when we jump, we can see that the part is below us. <laughs> it kind of like makes us hover for a second. Wait a minute. Whee! <laughs> or it's pushing me up now. Anyway, yeah, so that's. That's unit vectors and dot unit dot magnitude. Pretty cool stuff.